This SMG interview is presented by Bob Cajun Brewing Company. This is SMG. I'm Mike Valente here with the fantastic Kyle Liberto. Kyle, tell us about your journey with Rogers TV and how you became a play-by-play -play commentator for the Mississauga Steelheads. That's an incredible story. Uh, when I was uh, attending Sheridan College uh, for broadcast journalism, I went for an audition uh, that had nothing to do with sports. It was a show called High School Rush. Uh, basically went, you know, door to door throughout every high school in Toronto and, and just kind of talked about their extracurricular activities and, you know, spirit events and things like that. And I knew I didn't have a shot. I put on my best, you know, Joe Buck game <laughs> seven voice and uh, it just, it wasn't going to pan out. Uh, but luckily, uh, one of the sports producers was there and, and they thought that I had uh, you know some potential within their sports department doing some play-by-play -play and things like that so I started doing the the high school circuit in Toronto and uh, worked my way over to Peel and continued to do some high school stuff GTHL uh, and from there I got an opportunity to fill in for a steelhead game that season previous to me starting uh, I was against the Sudbury Wolves with my future color man Matt Cullen he also got the opportunity as well um, it was a, it was a great opportunity we uh, we had the chance to, to call a great game and um, I guess the rest is history they gave us the position right. the following season and uh, it was uh, you know a lot of fun that's great and your famous goal call is well let's do it on three together do you mind okay. if I do it with you let's is do that it. allowed yeah okay so one two three scores <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Perfect, right? So how does that happen? Did that just happen one night, like naturally, and it became a thing, or what's the story? I think it was towards the end of my first season with the team, which was last year. I uh, I, I wanted to be a little bit more creative with my calls. I was already creative enough. I'm, I'm very cinematic when I do my goal calls, but I wanted to add a little bit more flavor. And I think one time it just came out. The za just came out at the end of it, and uh, I kind of rolled with it. And right. uh, it, it's 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 obviously stuck, and everybody seems to love it. So uh, yeah. you know, I'll continue to do it. When I do it, it's, I use the hands. It's the Italian the in me, Italian, right? Like, yes. stores, <laughs> You know, one of those things, right? Now, Don Cherry and Ron McLean actually talked about you and that famous goal call on Coach's Corner on a little show called Hockey Night in Canada. I think we've heard of it. Uh, what did that feel like? It was like, crazy. It was, yeah, it was, amazing, it right? was, you know, the best moment of my career by far, maybe even one of the best moments of my life. I mean, it was absolutely incredible. Um, that's a staple. And when you have the dawns of hockey, no pun intended, uh, you know, talking about, uh, talking about you, uh, on coach's corner, it's, it's very surreal. I was actually at the Jays game for my birthday. It was on my birthday. Yeah. I was at the Jays game. And, uh, as soon as it went live to air, I take my phone out and it's text, 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 Twitter notification, Twitter notification. It was really crazy. So uh, I do have to give a lot of uh, a lot of love to Taylor Schuld, though. I, he put in a little word there too. That's right. So. The founder of this group, by the way, <laughs> Taylor Schuld. Look him up. That's fantastic. Honestly, yes. what a great, great thing to have uh, for your career. So yes. congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned briefly before we were chatting about Ron and Don, your style. Talk to us more about how you kind of formed your style in the booth and maybe some of your influences. You mentioned Joe Buck growing up, but some of your influences and how you kind of formed your own. Yeah, um, I think the biggest influence for me is Gus Johnson, uh, somebody who's done a lot of great work with, with NCAA March Madness, uh, currently working with Fox Sports right now, but he's very unique. He, he loves those dramatic, just high-pitched calls, whether it's a game winner or you know a Hail Mary. Um, he's been a big influence for me, and I actually went pretty much word for word one of his calls, uh, Kyle Lowry with the dagger in the Milwaukee series, and I translated that to an overtime winner uh, against the Peterborough Peets in the conference final. So I changed up a couple Couple of things but that just shows you how much of an influence he has for me so I try to exemplify a little bit of that but there's only one Kyle Alberto I only try to be uh, Kyle Alberto and uh, it's a little bit of my flavor as well we've seen a lot of uh, community television stations shut down across the country this yes. year which is very troubling because guys like you got your start there a lot of people get their start in TV and learn the ins and outs of broadcasting at a community television station uh, maybe so maybe just a comment on that and how that's troubling but also when you have all this uncertainty in this industry that we're in, how do you yourself kind of work through that and break through it? Because it's, it's hard to deal with sometimes, right? It's very daunting. Certainly. I mean, yeah. I think everybody in the media right now is wondering where they're going to get their opportunities. I mean, everybody that, that wants to hire at the big networks, at the TSNs, the sports nets down south, at the, you know, the NBCs and the Foxes, you know, they, they, they want, you know, local community uh, experience. And everybody's wondering where that next opportunity is going to come. And, and for me, it's very unsettling. We've had a little bit of, of uh, juggling with, with our current station, with Rogers TV Peel. And um, it, it's, 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 it's certainly troubling. It's, it's troubling for myself. It's troubling for people that I've gone to school with, aspiring journalists, aspiring on-air talent. Uh, it's, it's very difficult, but you know, uh, you just have to find that next opportunity, wherever it might be. Um, there certainly are opportunities with so much digital uh, platforms and, 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 and other, uh, other opportunities as well. 
I think you exemplify, Kyle, what people need really in any job. You have the drive and the passion, and you actually love what you do. And I think that just goes such a long way. We mentioned the Ron and Don thing, obviously huge for your career. But maybe mention a few other moments over the last few, or, few years where you kind of said to yourself, like, OK, that's why I do this, right? Like, that, made, that was so satisfying. That's exactly why I'm in this business. You know what? It's just small things. You know, whether it's fans coming to the uh, coming to the arena and, and telling you, you know, you do such a great job, or uh, you know, interacting with the players, and the, you know, that's one of the reasons why I like shouting out, you know, some of the players' hometowns and, and their their area codes and their families and their billet families. It's for them. You know, it's for them. They they take these moments just as much, if not more, than you. And um, those are just special moments for me. And, and just getting a chance to interact with people that listen to you on a game in game out basis is uh, is huge for me so that's probably the biggest takeaway for sure uh, for those people who are on camera as reporters and uh, broadcasters or behind the mic each of us have a different way of preparing for a broadcast or an interview how do you prepare for me, um, I, 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 I put as much effort into my goal calls than everything else. You know, that's a big thing for me. Uh, you know, again, I like being unique. I, I like having the ability for the players and everybody to take something away from the broadcast. So I certainly do a lot of research on their hometowns. Um, you know, were they previously played? Things like that. Uh, and, I, and I really like d diving into uh, junior hockey careers, not just for the players, but for the coaches as well. And uh, I, I like going back in time. I like telling a story throughout the entire game. And that's something that is benefited me very well and, and research is key if you're going to get into this field play by play research has to be done and it has to be done at a high level that's great let's do one more scores as we close okay let's do it one two three scores <laughs> kyle thanks so much mike thank you so much man